Hello, I am David W. Parker. This is Programming Today I Learned, WebGL series episode 82. This is blending part one, and we're going to dive right in in just a second. Just want to note that when we're blending uh, multiple objects together, uh, first you need to enable the depth test, draw the opaque objects, then turn the depth mask to read only, draw the transparent objects sorted from furthest back to the closest, and turn the depth mask back on. I'm just going to note that now. Um, we will do that eventually, but that's not in this episode, and we will get to that in a future episode. Um, also note that our vertex and fragment shaders that we are using are very simple in this example, and um, so we're not using any kind of fog or lighting as well. We're just doing the blending here. So let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at what is new. Um, as we are scrolling down here, Everything is basically the same per before until we get um, down into the init shaders. Like I said, we're just using these very simplified shaders for reading and rendering. And then our initialization of WebGL, we're no longer turning on the depth test. In fact, what we're going to do is we're going to enable this blend. We're going to use the blend function uh, with the, this is the source and this is the destination. And we're going to use source of alpha and the destination of one minus source alpha. And we'll get into those in a future episode. And then that is enabling our blend function here. As we scroll down, we are going to continue to keep everything else the same until we get to our mouse down. And as per usual, when we are dealing with our uh, picking state, what we're going to need to do is uh, draw out everything the way that we expect it to be drawn. Again, if we are blending, then we're going to end up not with the proper RGB values that our picking uh, mechanism expects. And so what we need to do is disable blend, turn on the depth test, draw all of our objects, and then go ahead and afterward turn it back off and then set the blend function again. So uh, that's basically it for what is going on within this application. So let's go ahead and just take a look at what our, our cube looks like here. So you can see clearly that it's just this nice little cube and the values are blended with each other so that you can see through it. And you end up with some very interesting looking uh, color combinations from each of these sides of the cube. So uh, we'll get into a little more details of blending in the future episodes. And so that's it for this episode. If you like what you saw, please subscribe and like this video on YouTube. That'll help me a lot. Share it on social media if you will. Go to programmingtil.com and sign up for my newsletter. And uh, be sure to follow me on Twitter as well. Thank you and have a great one.